Hi guys, it's Ray. Um, today we are going to do a couple of wood grains. We're just going to do the wood grain part. Um, this is strictly a wood grain tutorial. I'm going to show you my preferred method and the items I like to use. And if you were going to be new to wood grain, it's what I would recommend. I know there's lots of other alcohol inks out there on the market and browns and other ways of doing these but having done this for four or five years this is what I find works best and these are the colors I would suggest um, I'm gonna do three barrel tumblers from Maker Flow Crafts these are the 25 ounce barrels I have prepped them all and painted them with the Rust-Oleum 2x ultra cover paint and primer in semi-gloss white Semi-gloss is important for this, in my opinion. Um, I find a mat will, like, wick in the ink and spread it within the paint instead of keeping it moving on the surface of the paint. So, that is my preferred method. You can use foam brushes. You can use makeup wedges. I prefer chip brushes. Uh, these are just a one-inch chip brush. I have a big box of these, so that is what I'm going to use. It's what I prefer. And I have this pack from Tim Holtz Ranger. I don't know what um, pack this is, but I will link it on Amazon down below. Um, it has caramel, ginger, and latte in it. For a very light wood grain, latte is my preferred. And then for my darkest wood grain, I go up to teak wood. So if you were going to get just two inks and you wanted a light and a dark, I would suggest a latte and teak wood. If you want more of the mid-range colors, caramel or ginger, or even the butterscotch, if you're ordering separately, is somewhat similar to the caramel. So I'm going to open these up, get on a pair of gloves. I highly, highly recommend gloves when you're working with alcohol inks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one in just latte, one in just the teak wood, and then the third one I'm going to mix the ginger and the caramel. So that is what we're going to do. I like to shake them up a little bit. Again, these are not going to be finished tumblers. They are just an exercise in wood grain and showing varying colors. Um, I do not like the Tim Holtz Espresso. Sometimes it turns a little bit green and sometimes it will turn back and sometimes it will stay kind of green. So um, I don't recommend that one. So I'm going to start with the latte. And I generally don't wash my brushes that I use for these. I typically use the same brush over and over again. Um, and I'll pick up different colors that'll kind of get reactivated as I go. But that doesn't bother me. So I'm going to start by running a line down the cup. And you can see how it's spreading on the surface, not wicking into the paint. That's what you want. And I like to make a couple of passes around the cup to get that nice layered wood effect. And you can go sideways to make skinnier passes or use the broad side. And when you start to fill in, you can do smaller sections and even messing it up a little bit with the bristles 
to start giving it more depth and character and tiny little bits. You don't need a ton of ink, especially in your smaller spots. That was a bit much, so I'm going to kind of work it first. And once you have full coverage, you can kind of pick out those spots that you want to have a little more texture, depth, and dimension. Okay. So I am pretty happy with that. It's time to address the bottom. Hold it straight. And basically the same thing. Try not to run your ink over the edge or you will have to fix it up. So if you don't like the way your edge came out after doing your bottom, just go back in and touch it up. And this will be more noticeable where you went over the edge on a lighter color. Kind of blends in more on the darker colored inks. So I don't like this smooth look, so we're going to go over that just a little bit. And the ink will reactivate itself, so if you do this and you end up with like a white spot, like that circle there, once you brush back over it, that circle will go back away, I promise you. You really can't make mess these up, especially on that slick surface of the semi-gloss. That is it. I do recommend this color for like um, a baseball tumbler, like the baseball bat style. So remember, we're going from one end of the spectrum to the other. I'm moving that out of the way because sometimes you fling ink a little bit as you do this and you don't want to be flinging it at your other cups or yourself. But same thing, I'm just going to go around and around until I get what I like. So this is where I like to start building the dimension and the depth in on these darker ones. Like where I had that kind of V that formed the first time. I'll kind of work within that and layer.
because it'll build up a darker color and a whole lot of dimension. And this dot I will come back to, I promise. And if you want it like a rustic, banged up kind of wood, you can just kind of tap at it. You can see how much depth and dimension that put in that little spot. That's why I don't like to do the draw line, draw line, draw line. Do the entire way around. I like to leave that white and fill back in. See how that left me that nice dark edge for a little bit of a knot. Now you may or may not be able to see that some bits of this do go a little bit green, but nothing like the espresso does. And in my experience, the teak wood generally goes back or even if it holds a little bit of green the green that the espresso does or the teakwood does kind of stays truer to the wood grain feel if that makes sense so i am really happy with this i love this for like the distressed barrel look um or hunting cups Things like that. So, there we go for the dark color. I do have one little rollover I'm going to fix right here. Like I said, generally the darker color um, you don't notice as much on the edge. So, that is number two. And last, again, I'm going to do the caramel and the ginger. The ginger is going to be a little bit darker, and these are going to have a little bit more of a red tone to them. But I'm going to do the caramel first. I always like to do light before dark when I'm doing multicolor. So if I'm doing three, like if I was going to use latte, ginger, and teakwood, I would do them in that order. And what I mean by line, line, line is like the way I learned this, um, I think the first video I watched like five years ago was they did a row and then they immediately on top of that one did their next section and then their next section. And you do get some character and dimension this way, but I feel like, um, skipping around gives the sections time to dry in between. I feel it just builds much more depth and character in my So now I'm going to pick up the ginger. fairly similar color. This one just has a little bit more of a red to it.
And again, we're getting into the pass where we start to build our texture and dimension. I'm kind of letting this dry before I roll the cup too much. If you get a run, try and grab it quick. Otherwise, it will eat that white line down your whole side of your cup. Okay, so I am pretty happy with how this is shaping up. I'm going to do a little bit on the bottom before I go back to that knotty spot because I'm going to get my other color back out. So I'm going to put that away. I'm going to get my caramel back out. one little white spot down here. Now remember the caramel's not going to be as light this time because now we've got both colors mixed on the brush already. So you're going to get a whole another um, layer of colorant. And I let that run a bit more than I had intended, but that's okay. But I am pretty happy with this. So that is it. I'm going to grab the other two. So Latte also looks slightly green, but should turn back into light brown. Three very, very different looking wood grains. Same basic technique all the way across the board, but depending on the style you're looking for, there you go. Latte, teakwood, and ginger and caramel. Caramel, caramel, however you want to say it. So I'm going to get a coat of epoxy on these and then I will bring them back in just to show you under epoxy. I do not seal my wood grains. I will literally let these dry for 10-15 minutes and take them straight to epoxy. They never run on me. Okay, so these are done. Sorry about the glare from the window. There's the teakwood one. And the mixed colored one. Caramel and ginger. And then the lightest one, the latte. And all three of them together. So that should give you a good idea of doing a wood grain. Um, they make excellent men's cups, especially. And um, if you've tried one or you haven't tried one, let me know. Let me know what your favorite colors to use are, and let me know which of these three is your favorite. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.